Rupak and I will actually co-present the, uh, the next couple of slides. Uh, Rupak mic'd up with the handheld mic. We'll talk us through the architecture of Private Cloud Director. Thank you. I'm Rupak Parikh, uh, CTO at Platform 9. I'm going to be talking about the BCD architecture. So there are three distinct, what I call as uh, comp areas in this diagram. On the left-hand side is what we call as an operations plane. This is only available when Platform 9 is hosting the management plane. The management plane is the place where all the APIs, the database, the message queue, uh, UI components, load balancers, all of that live. This is what Tanay and Chris showed when they were logging in through the, the UI. Uh, that all goes through, uh, all, all, all of that goes through the management API. The operations plane is the place where we collect all the logs and the metrics and the alerting happens so that Platform 9 can provide our customers with a managed experience where Platform 9 is uh, really monitoring all your infrastructure. So that's an additional service. If you are self-hosting it, the operations plane is not available. Chris is going to go into a lot of details about the operations plane, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Management plane, as I said, is a bunch of services really running on Kubernetes uh, when you deploy it on your own environment. Platform 9 takes care of the actual substrate on which it runs. We, we stand up all these services, and then you can start uh, really creating or adding your infrastructure. Can I go back to something you just said? So you said the operations plane is available only for customers who are hosted by Platform 9, not self-hosted, correct? Correct. So those capabilities like logs and metrics, like are they just not available for those customers who might need to troubleshoot at some point? No, they are available. They will have to bring their own aggregation systems, Splunk, Datadogs of the world, so, so they can still do it. With Platform 9, Platform 9 does it by default with our own automation. It, it, it's all integrated together. Uh, understood, okay. Yep. When you want to onboard your servers into PCD, the, the process is actually very, very simple. While you see a lot of components on the right-hand side, though that's where the servers are. Platform 9 ships with a bootstrapping agent called SPF9 agent. We are going to show that uh, in, a, in a few minutes. You deploy it on each of your servers. They report back to the management plane and using the UI or the API, you can say, you know what? I want it to be the hypervisor. I want to use this to store the images because it has connectivity to your object storage or it is connected uh, to, your, to, to your other storage system with SSD, so on and so forth. Or um, I want this to be the node where all the nodes out traffic goes through. Or I want all the nodes to handle that. So there are many, many con configuration possible depending upon the use case, but that's where it starts. So install the agent, go to the UI or the API, configure all the servers, and boom, your, your private cloud is, is, is really ready to be consumed. At which point of time, uh, question here. Uh, so you have the like auto deploy solution for uh, nodes in the cluster, or it needs to be pre-configured, or you just have you know I don't know PX, PXA uh, deployment or Ironic or all of the above. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we have uh, our teams, our customers. Uh, sometimes they have their own technologies to boot up these servers into their operating system. We support all the major operating systems. Red Hat open to um, CentOS but or Rocky. With the, uh, with the management plane, it's in the box, those uh, mechanisms. Or the customers need to have their own mechanism to, to, to deploy uh, that platform line solution, ECD. For the self-hosted one, what we do is, again, we take the bare operating system. Mm -hmm. As I said, you can pick up any one of those. And Platform 9 have the installer, which, which takes care of that, mm -hmm. uh, installing the management plane. As I said, it's a Kubernetes cluster with all the components. For the servers, very sim very similarly, that agent is going to bootstrap everything for you. You don't have to prepare anything else except for the vanilla operating system. Okay. Even there, our services team will use Pixie, Ironic, 
or just plain all ansible to you know onboard hundreds of nodes at a time but it's not like a model in the uh, pcd you need to deploy those vanilla linux let's say systems right and then on top of that the pf9 agents are deployed automatically through ansible or wherever the, the way i would describe it is a layered cake mm -hmm. so you can uh, platform 9 can help with with that bootstrapping as well but a lot of our customers we have seen they have their own ways of booting that up I understand. Thank yeah. you. Um, once all the servers are there, then you can configure them with all the enterprise uh, features. For example, you want high availability for the virtual machine, or you want rebalancing, which is if you're over provisioning, you want to make sure every virtual machine gets what it wants. Uh, folks who are familiar with VMware DRS, that's really what I'm talking about. You can create many, many virtual networks, or you can give access to your customers to create their own virtual networks. On top of that, we also have Kubernetes APIs available. So you can say, you know what, I want a Kubernetes cluster of 10 nodes, 20 nodes, 30 nodes, and that can be easily created on top of those virtual machine. And Platform 9 Automation will handle creation of those virtual machine, the networks, the load balancers, so on and so forth. So that, that's really what the architecture is about. Any any questions that I can answer? We are going to be talking about each one of those in a little bit more detail as we move on. So the the one thing that I noted, and um, obviously you've 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 named things with the uh, you know a cloud director notion. Uh, we've been talking about VMware, so there's the there's the concept, the notion of what was the original vCloud director, uh, the different stories of the vCloud director over time. Um, you just gave other examples where um, if you say DRS, this is the equivalency. So it, it seems like there's almost like a, a Rosetta Stone required for the translation of, you know, what what more commonly would be known as if you're a VMware culture. And then there's this notion of an alternative. Um, is, there, uh, is there any other major story uh, that you would say, like, this is a really big deal in the VMware world, and this is what we call it in this world? Um, so that, that kind of a translation is uh, uh, interesting because uh, making it accessible um, for uh, someone that may be is in charge of the team that runs the VMware, but may not actually know what DRS is or why it matters. Um, so, so when you think about your naming conventions and the kind of the marketing approach that you're taking, is there, is there any other um, large item uh, in, in your story where you would say, ah, this is another one to call out because it's very important to the people that are currently in a VMware world, um, so you have to kind of explain to them what the rough analogy is then in, in your, uh, the, your target environment, I guess. Um, thank you for that question. We have been trying to do that, and uh, during the presentation, uh, we will call out those. Okay. But I have spoken about the major ones that, that we have seen. Uh, clusters is one which Pooja would cover in inner section on how, how, that, how that comes about. But other than that, I think we have covered everything. Okay. 